Okay, so I've got just a bunch of stuff kicking around, um, but what I wanted to talk about specifically is um, what makes a stronger axe handle, wider grain or tighter grain, and, and why. Um, this is something that has been uh, on my mind for a while now. Um, I initially had the question um, a couple years ago um, during the pandemic when I had lots of free time <laughs> and, uh, and I really researched it. I really, really looked into it. And, uh, I have two ax handles here that just happened to be the perfect way to, um, to highlight the difference and, and the, um, and the characteristics of a good ax handle. So these are both, uh, the same ax. It's the two pound Hudson Bay, the updated version, the Hudson Bay from Council Tool 24 inch handle. Now, if you look at these ax handles, you know, say you're at the store and you are looking at the two and you're going to say, wow, those both have zero slope of grain. I mean, perfectly zero slope of grain. These are just standard council tool axes. I didn't even pick them out personally. This is whatever the company sent me. Um, so, I mean, I've always had amazing impressions, amazing luck with council tool handles. Um, I've never had a lemon handle from council tool ever, not once. Uh, and I've, I've had a lot of council tool handles. My go-to handle is the 32 inch curved from council tool. It's amazing. I'd put that on any full size felling ax. It's incredible. And the, the, uh, the mill that makes council tools handles is actually owned by a relative of the council family. So it, it really is, um, I mean, it's amazing. It's, I, I'm impressed by the company. I think it's, it's incredible that anybody in America has been able to maintain a continuous business since the 1800s through the depression, the world wars, um, the changes in technology. I, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and I, I get the sense that, you know, here's, anyways, I'm, this is an aside, but I, I get the sense that the people that make these products actually care about a good quality product. Um, and, and I think that reflects itself in the quality of their handles. Um, but so say you are at the store and you're looking at both of these and you're like, geez, what should I get? I want a two pound council tool handle uh, uh, on a 24 inch handle. Which do I choose? Now there's one train of thought that says you want this one that has the very, very tight grain because tight grain is better, goes the school of thought. Then there's the other school of thought, rarer, more rare, that says you want wide grain. Um, based on my research, based on my experience, um, the wider grain is stronger. The wider grain is more preferable. Um, this is based on, you know, numerous forest service studies that are all available on Google Scholar and elsewhere. Um, when our government was actually st staffed by serious people that did serious work uh, for a serious economy, <laughs> our government was actually uh, doing fairly useful things at one point, a hundred years ago in America. The kind of science we do now is it's inapplicable to anyone but the most ridiculous of people. Uh, but back in the early 1900s and, you know, the 20s and 30s and all the way through the 40s, our Forest Service did amazing studies, particularly on axe handles, because there, there was a real economic impact to having high quality axe handles uh, and manufacturers really benefited from all of this research. Um, if a lumberjack uh, breaks an axe handle and, and they're chopping down, you know, the trees that we need as a country to, you know, fight a war is, you know, in, in World War One or World War Two, you know, up until probably, um, probably something like the 30s, a lot of our Navy had um, uh, wooden ships, or at least wooden planks on their ships. And so we needed white oak, that was what we needed. Um, we needed, you know, tall white pines for the masts. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that our country shifted away from um, from wooden, uh, wooden constructed 
objects and equipment. And so our government had a real vested interest in studying things that would make processing what they needed more efficient. Um, and handles, I mean, handles are, um, are a huge component of the axe. I mean, that's where the, that's, that's your experience with the axe. That's the handle. Uh, that's where to swing it. It's how to swing it, how long you can swing it. And axe, it's a hand axe without a handle. And you're not going to chop down any white oak worth harvesting with a, with a hand axe in any um, acceptable amount of time. So th that's just my rambling way of saying um, our government has studied this question, the U.S. government, back when it was uh, run by serious people <laughs> and we were a serious country. Um, the wide grain is better and it's better for, um, for this reason. There are, broadly speaking, two kinds of trees. Um, you have ring, uh, ring porous and diffuse porous. Th those are you two, ring porous and diffuse porous. And you're gonna be like, what are you talking about? Um, academic, it's ridiculous, it's overly scientific. I feel like I'm in math class, you know, and they're trying to teach me, you know, algebra again, which I haven't used since those <laughs> math classes, but it, it makes sense. It makes sense when, when you um, just kind of break down those terms. Um, diffuse means distributed. So the, the, the vessels, and, and I maybe should back up a little bit, and both of those terms refer to where the hollow vessels that carry nutrients and water, uh, where they proceed up the tree. That, that's all that it means. Um, Trees are essentially straws stacked together, and the nutrients need to get from the roots, from the ground, the dirt, all the way up to the crown. That's how they grow. Um, and so these two terms deal with uh, where those straws are, where they're distributed throughout the tree. Ring means the straws are distributed through the growth rings, through one ring, particularly the early wood of the ring. And one of these handles is a great example of that. I think it's actually, yeah, here we go. So if you see the little dots on the handle, and I'm not really able to focus this close. All right, so if you see the little dots on the handle, those are little holes. Uh, those are the early wood um, vessels. So when you have uh, a tree in the spring, everything in the spring grows very fast and very quickly. And so uh, in, in a um, ring diffuse species like hickory, and this only applies to hickory, what I'm saying is specifically hickory. If you venture outside of hickory, take the general principles here and apply it to that wood. A tree will be growing very, very fast. It will be saturated with water. It will be saturated with nutrients. And accordingly, it needs larger passages to send all of that up the tree. Now, ultimately, those vessels solidify. They, they stay the size that they, they were, that they needed to be in the spring. And so they're hollow. That reduces the density of your handle. Um, now... A diffuse porous handle, and it's called diffuse. Diffuse means spread out. That diffuse, you, you diffuse something across a plain, a field of wheat. You diffuse the wheat. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so on a species like pine, you don't see any pinholes. There's no pinholes in this species of pine. That's because... Most softwoods, especially construction lumber, um, they are diffuse porous. So there's no pins, no pins anywhere. Um, now, that doesn't mean that all of the vessels are the same size, because generally speaking, the vessels are going to be larger in the early wood and then get smaller in the late wood. But this is, this is very spongy. Um, it's very light. It's very airy. Um, you give this to your five-year-old in Taekwondo to break, you know, <laughs> this, this stuff is not, it's not super strong. Um, 
Now, in, in softwoods, it is true that uh, the tighter the grain, the stronger the piece of wood. Now, the, the exact science of that, the rationale, you know, I guess it could be maybe proportionally speaking, if you have tighter grain, it means that the tree isn't growing as fast in the spring. It's, it's growing slower and over time. And so the early wood that the tree puts on in the spring is going to be, the vessels are going to be smaller. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Um, pines are very fast growing. Hardwood trees are generally much slower growing. Um, and so if you reduce the size of those vessels in the spring, um, I know piano makers and musical instrument, you know, uh, luthieries, you know, they, they want the spruces that grow on the shady side of a mountain in Alaska, because you can look at a, a tree, um, the cross section of a tree that grew on the shady side, it's going to be much smaller, but often much older than the larger trees that grow on the sunny side. So I could see reducing the proportion of early wood to late wood. That's important. Um, now, I do want to caution everyone out there. This is just another way to select a good quality axe handle. And you are going to be selecting, you're going to be using your own intuition. You know, picking out an axe handle, it's kind of like, it's kind of like voodoo science. Um, this is just another factor among many. I do think it happens to be an important factor. Um, but if you see an ax handle with tight grain, that doesn't mean it's a weak handle. Look at this handle from Whiskey River. You say, oh, you're telling me that I got a tight ax handle and that makes it weak. Well, not, not at all, because this ax handle is made out of some of the densest hickory I have ever felt. <laughs> I mean, it, if I have, uh, if I'm going to pick this axe handle um, based on its density, you know, if, if you have two axe handles of the same density, then go to your next characteristic. I think you start with density. You know, if, if you pick an axe handle up and it feels like pine, set it back down. If you pick it up and it feels like hickory, sure, then move on. You know, then if it's a dense piece of hickory, look for run out, look for continuous grain, look for slope of grain, um, you know, look for lack of inclusions and knots and all of these things. It's a checklist, but ultimately it's a, it's a checklist based on, you know, what each individual person thinks is going to make a good ax handle. There's too many variables. Things are so different. Trees can grow on the sunny side of a mountain, on the shady side of a mountain, uh, uh, where it's wet, where it's dry, in different climates. I mean, all this stuff, it, it's all just one factor among many to pick a good ax handle. Um, but this is one factor that I often see wrong. Um, I've seen a lot of people in the comments and you know, in, uh, in the reviews for products. You know, this company sent me a very, very uh, wide-grained axe handle. It's weak. It's going to break. They don't know how to make axes or, you know, it's like... <laughs> but then the other guy is going to say, you know, they sent me a very, you know, tight-grained axe handle. They don't, they don't know how to make axes. And you're like, you know. <laughs> so, so, but th I just wanted to make this quick little... Um, quick little video on, on the two subjects. You know, ultimately, in my opinion, it comes down to density. But if two handles are roughly the same density, then I think you can move on, check things off your box, like, you know, good continuous grain, decent slope of grain, lack of inclusions and knots and things of that nature. Um, but ultimately, for hickory, which is a ring uh, porous wood, um, the, uh, the, the less hollow vessels that you have, the fewer hollow vessels that you have and the smaller they are, the stronger that wood is going to be, uh, because the late wood doesn't tend to have those cavities. The late wood is very, very dense because the tree is growing slower. So I hope you find this useful um, 
and if not useful, um, at least not offensive. So <laughs> we wouldn't want to offend anybody. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.